everybody. Welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm Susan, and this is my husband, Jim. He's just so cute. I love him so much. And we are here to talk to you about some powerful truth from the Word of God. Don't you just love the Word of God? Nothing is as good as that. You know, I look back over, over the last 52 years, and I think, wow, look what the Word, the seed of the Word of God has done in our lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it. You think, well, it, that it just can't happen, but it did mm -hmm. because the Word of God is so powerful. Yeah, today we're going to be talking to y'all about hope deferred. But what Jim is talking about has to do with what we have recently done on several of our broadcasts. We've talked about how change is easy, yes, and it's because what he said. The Word of God living in your heart makes all the difference because it produces automatically. It automatically produces. When you plant it there. Like when you plant it there and you nourish it, you cannot stop it from, 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 from doing what it's supposed to do. I know. It's just like, wow. That's right. Okay, so, but anyway, so you can go back and you can watch those programs. They're archived on VTN for sure. You can go there and you can just click in whatever one you want to watch. And then another way is from um, bottom line YouTube 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 yeah okay so there we have it all right I'm gonna read y'all a great scripture here we're gonna talk about hope deferred which that means delayed yes. or it means that you know it just doesn't look like anything's gonna work out and so you've just kind of put it aside you've just let it lay in it, other words lay you've laid it down okay and it it will make your heart sick and that's what we're going to talk to you about today. But first, I want to read this to you in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 12. It says, In those days you were living apart from Christ. Now, he's talking about people who have just now come into the kingdom of God. And they, Jesus is Christ. He's the Son of the living God. And now they're born again. And he says, But before that, before you did that, you were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel. And you did not know the covenant promises that God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. Ooh, that's, so That's not good. No, but see, it is good and bad. It's good because then you see, oh, well, if I want hope, I'm going to have to have God in my life. That's right. And see, here's the thing about hope. There, there, you, you cannot put a timetable on it. Mm -mm. I have a perfect example. Give us a perfect example. When I graduated from pharmacy school in 1969, okay, I had a desire to put to open a pharmacy in a small town. <laughs> you say, well, why did you want to do that? I have no idea. That's just what That's you just wanted what to I do. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I w didn't happen, didn't happen, didn't happen, didn't happen. Now, I don't say that I ever laid it down. But I did come to the point where I didn't think about it all the time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, uh, during, uh, I think it was the summer of 1993. I thought it was 92. No, I think it was 93, okay. summer of 1993. Uh, I talked to someone and on July, on July the, uh, not July, uh, February, the 14th, 1994, I opened a pharmacy in a little town of about 900 people. There you had it. And it was a dream, a hope fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't, ha it doesn't necessarily happen next week. No, some, some, some things don't. That's right. Okay, but uh, now we're going to go back and give you our theme scripture from it's in the book of Proverbs. It's chapter 4, verse 3. It says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when the desire comes, it is a tree of life. Ooh, okay. That is so good. Isn't that good? So first, let's just talk about hope deferred makes the heart sick. Okay, you think about this. Today in America, there's been like an epidemic of heart failures, yes, right? I mean, right. young people. People that are, look great and fit have heart problems. But what happens to a person when their physical heart is sick is that awful things happen. Mm -hmm. They have heart attacks. Sometimes they die. Sometimes their whole life has to be rearranged 
to live because of this heart that is sick. Okay, well, this says that hope deferred makes the heart sick, but he's not talking about your physical heart, which is the core of your being. But he's talking about your spiritual heart, which is the core of your spiritual being. Yeah. Okay, so he says, all right, he's telling us, well, hope deferred is going to make your heart sick. All right, think about that. It's important then we do all we can so that we don't let our spirit heart become sick. Right. Okay? And then he goes, he says, but when the desire comes, it's a tree of life. That's what Jim said. He said, you know, when, when this happened in his life, it was like, wow, a tree of life. It was, it was. It was like a dream come true. But anyway, let's, let's just take a look at a couple of translations here. Uh, the NLT says it a little differently. You want to read it? No, you go ahead. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a dream fulfilled is a tree of life. Ooh, that is so good. Yeah. That is so good. Passion translation. You want to read it? Go ahead. When hope's dream seems to drag on and on, now that's what we're talking about, the delay can be depressing, but when at last your dream comes true, life's sweetness will satisfy your soul. Okay, so let's talk about exactly what is hope. Okay. Now we've talked about that before because I know that I've, I'm pretty sure we've given the definition of Bible hope is a good expectation of something good something good is going to come my way that's right you know when you read old testament there's a lot of good things there but jeremiah 29 11 says that okay help me i know the plans that i, I have, have for you it says the lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you a future and a hope and that word hope right there if you look it up it means expectation and that's what we're talking about. Our hope must be an expectation of something good. Okay, but it's also founded in the Word of God. Okay, so we're going to talk to you a little bit about this uh, as we look at the father of faith. Okay, that would be Abraham. That would be Abraham, that's right. Okay, now... I've thought about him a lot because, you know, we, Jim and I, we, we're so in love with the message of faith. Yes, we are. You know, we're just, you know, it's just so good. And, you know, we've talked about it to y'all so much about faith is the most critical issue in your life. It is for a fact. And so it, that's, that's what makes the difference in everything in the life of a believer is that component of faith. Faith. Right. Jesus said in Mark chapter 11, verse 22, have faith in God. Mm -hmm. And he, that was not a suggestion. No, it was, a, it was a command. It was a command. Do that. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Without faith, it's impossible, impossible to, to please God. God. Right. Okay, so anyway, as you look at Abraham, though, see, y'all, he could have easily been called the father of hope because he waited 25 years for his dream to be fulfilled. Now, that's a long time. Yeah, that's almost how long he waited. That's right. Okay, so anyway, but the whole time he was confident that what God had promised him he would do. And the Bible says he never wavered. He never considered the deadness of Sarah's womb, but he was strong in faith. We could say he had enduring hope. Yes, he did. Because, you know, the circumstances were saying, oh, this is not going to happen. Not going to happen. That's right. There's no chance of this. In fact, when you read in Romans uh, chapter 4, verse 18, it's going to tell you there's no reason for hope. Okay. Abraham just kept hoping. But here's the, see, here's the difference. Here's the difference. You know, you, you, ha you let's say, for instance, you're, you know, you're having something, and you have this little voice that comes that says, but, oh, not gonna happen but what's your response but god said god said that's that's it but god said so i'm gonna show that to you exactly what you said is right uh where did i have that i may not even have it written in my notes but it's in my heart and it's in my mind about how um his his faith is what kept his hope alive. And here it is. It's still, it's in Romans. 
is chapter 4, and we're gonna, I'm just going to read this whole little passage to you from 18 to 21. Okay. So we were talking about how he could just as easily have been called the father of hope. But you're going to see as we go through this this morning that it's like faith, hope, and love are all just kind of connected in a, in a way that you have to have one to have the other, and one can't work without the other. Right. But anyway, so look at this in Romans uh, chapter 4, 18. Even when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping, believing that he would become the father of many nations. For God had said to him, that's how many descendants you will have. Now, do you all know what he was talking about there? Do you know? Do you remember what, the... What was he talking He was about? talking about like the sand and the yeah. sea and like the stars in the sky. Can you count them? No, you cannot count no. them. But Abraham believed that because God had said this to him, that's how many you're going to have. He believed it. Then in verse 19, it says, Abraham's faith did not weaken, even though at about 100 years of age, it's time to be weak in every yeah, way at 100 right, years yeah. of age. And I mean, do we right. even know very many people that live that long? He figured his body was as good as dead, and so was Sarah's womb. But look at verse 20, he never wavered. He never changed his mind about God's believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger. And in this, he brought glory to God. He was fully convinced God is able to do whatever he promises. Let me, can I read that from the Passion Translation? Yeah. Verse 19. In spite of being nearly 100 years old, when the promise of having a son was made, his faith was so strong that it could not be undermined by the fact that he and Sarah were incapable of conceiving a child. He never stopped believing God's promise. And that is what kept his hope alive. That's right. And remember what it said in Proverbs? Hope deferred makes the heart sick. So you've got to keep your hope alive. And how are you going to do it? You're going to base it on the Word You're of God. You're going to base it on what God says. That's right. That's the only way you'll keep it alive. That's right. Well, okay, the, I mean, here's the reason for that. Because the Bible tells us that the Word of God will never change. Yeah. God's not wishy-washy. <clears throat> That's right. He says, has he not said it? Will he not do it? That's right. That's what the Bible says. That's so, so good. I mean, that's, what, that's the place you have to come to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's look at this, this Romans 4, 18. We're going to look at it in the Amplified. It says it like this. It says, for Abraham, human reason for hope being gone. And that's what you, what were you reading a while ago? Was that the Passion Translation? The Passion Translation yeah. said it almost the same way. That's right. And then it goes, he hoped in faith that he should become the father of many nations, just as he had been promised, so numberless shall your descendants be. So, so you can see, I mean, Abraham is determined that what God had spoken to him, he believed it. So can you and I do the same thing? Yes, we can. And so, you know, sometimes God speaks in an inaudible voice, maybe like in our spirit, you'll just, you'll just know something. You know, we, we've discovered, in fact, that it seems like that's the, one of the most profound ways that, that you hear God. That's right. You just know something. You just know something. And you go, oh, that's right. You know, mm -hmm. now I know. So we, we say this to one another a lot. If you don't know, don't. That's right. If you don't know, you don't know. Don't, don't. Don't do it if you don't know. Okay, but anyway... So that's one way God speaks. Another way he speaks is from this word, the written word of God. Yes. If you take this and, and you eat it like honey, you mm. know, that's what one of the prophets did. He said it was sweeter than honey to his lips. <clears throat> if you do that, it becomes so much a part of you that, that it will speak to you yes. when you rise up and walk on your way. Right. You'll hear God's word being spoken in your mind and in your heart. That's right. Okay, so I was going to read it from another translation. Okay, we're still Romans 4, 18. We're still talking about how Abraham could have really been called the father of hope. His hope was, there was no point in it. But this man was so in faith, believing what God said, he could continue to hope. Yeah, right. Okay, so the, mes <clears throat> the message says it like this. 
when everything was hopeless. Okay, that might be you today. You might be saying that right now. Just as you're watching our program, you might be saying, well, everything in my life is hopeless. And that's the way it was with Abraham. It says when everything was hopeless. It said Abraham believed anyway. Look at that. Deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw he could not do, but on what God said he would do. That's right. Listen, the Passion Translation says it this way, Romans 4, 18. <clears throat> Against all odds, when it looked hopeless, Abraham believed the promise of God and expected God to fulfill it. He took God at his word. Mm -hmm. And as a result, he became the father of many nations. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is incredible, isn't it? In, in just a few minutes, we're going to continue this, this message, and you're going to find out something maybe you didn't know about your heart. But right now, we're going to talk to you just a few minutes about being a partner with us. So, Jim, would you like to just say anything? Well, the, yeah, you know, if, if with partners, you can get more done. That's right. You know, when Jesus got in Peter's boat and preached that sermon, mm -hmm. well, so when he got through, he told Peter, he said, go down there and, and let your net down, you'll catch some fish. Well, okay, Peter did that. And the Bible says that he caught so many fish that he had to call his partners to come help him. Mm -hmm. And so they filled up their boat also. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it, it, that's the kind of the way it works. We all, mm -hmm. when, when we're partners, we share equally. That's right. Right? We so if equally. we get credit for this. That's right program because someone sitting at home got born again today yeah. or, or changed their life or more. changed their life whoever was a partner with us right. has the same credit as to your do. account as we do that's and right. that's that's really good. It, is good it is really good so we're just asking you to prayerfully consider we're asking you get to commit to twenty dollars a month each and every month and uh, we believe that doing that together, we promise, and part of it is we will pray for you every day. We ask that you pray for us mm -hmm. every day, and we will just see what God will do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. So partner with us. That's right. Do it. Do it. Okay, so I said perhaps you're going to learn something today about your heart that maybe you didn't know. Okay, so I'm going to share some things with you that are really, really good. This is in Deuteronomy and it's chapter 32, verses 45 <clears throat> to 47. I really like this passage I know of Scripture. You do. I know okay. you do. Okay, as Moses finished speaking all these words to all Israel, he said to them, Set your hearts on all the words which I testify among you today, which you shall command your children to be careful to observe all the words of this law. And then verse 47 says, For it's not a futile thing for you because it is your life. Ooh, that's good. So did your Sunday school teacher ever talk to you like that and say, hey, you've got to take this Word of God, this Bible, and you've got to treat it like it is your life. Yeah. And Moses, that's what he was saying because he was talking about God's Word. That's right. Okay, so anyway, now let's just, let's just analyze this a little bit and then... Um, or do, shall we read other translations? I think we need to read other translations. Let's read other translations, and then we'll take a closer right. look, look at it. New Living Translation. When Moses had finished reciting all these words to the people of Israel, he added, Take heart to all the words of warning I have given you today. Pass them on as a command to your children, so that they will obey every word of these instructions. These instructions are not empty words. They are your life. Wow. Now that you, you can't, I mean, that's, they're your life. Yeah, and y'all have heard me and Jim talk about the Bible is a handbook for life. It is, no doubt. There is nowhere else you are going to learn to live life. That's right. Let me read verse like 47 that. from the Amplified Classic. Okay. It says, For it is not empty and worthless, worthless trifle for you. It is your very life. Talking about the Word of God. Yeah. It's not empty. Mm -mm. It is your life. Yeah, so, so from now on, nobody's going to go to church and say, oh, I've heard this before. You'll yeah. never say that That's again. Right. You say, oh, feed it to me again. That's I right. love it. It's so good. It's so rich. It's so powerful. It's mm -hmm. so sweet. 
Okay, so now we're gonna we're gonna talk about some of this just a little bit right here. Where in the New King James, he said, "Set your heart hearts on these words," and then in the New Living, he said, "Take to heart all the words," and then forty six, he said, "Set your mind and hearts on all the word words which I command you." Okay, so let's just talk about setting our hearts or taking something to heart. Okay, so it means commit, determine, or purpose. Okay, so, you know, when I think about setting something, I immediately think about setting a clock. Right. Okay, but there's other things that you set that are, are set and they'll never be unset, and that would be things like jello and things like concrete, you know. But used to, you know, you couldn't go to the grocery store and, and buy Jello in a little self-serving size container and just eat it. Used to, you had to buy a box of Jello. Right. You had to add sugar. You had to add boiling water and stir it all together. And then you had to let it sit, sit. in the refrigerator until it was firm. God wants your heart to be like that about His Word. He wants your heart to be set on what does God say? Why, why does he want that? Because remember what we read up here? Remember Moses told them, he said, it's not futile. It's not, it's not useless. He said, um, these words are your life. And then, then Jim re-read to us from the Amplified, it's not empty and a worthless trifle for you. That's why he wants you to set your heart on the Word of God. Now, earlier we talked about how our heart is like the center of our spirit life, and everything flows out of the heart. In fact, in Proverbs it talks about guard your heart above all else, for out of it are the issues of life. Okay, so we've got to set our heart on what does the Bible say about different situations, right? Okay, so I had this conversation with my grandson and so I was saying, you know, this was Caleb, my grandson. He said, I said, <clears throat> I said, you know, hope, according to Terry Law, he says it's the forgotten message of the body of Christ. And you know, I've, I've really, really dug up some things in recent days about Bible hope, expectant of something good coming my way. And so, anyhow, so I'm talking to Caleb about it, <clears throat> and I said, you know, I said. So many times as believers, we don't realize that we have anything to do with our hope. Right. I, you know, until, until I saw this and about Abraham, I didn't really understand how closely connected my hope was with my faith. And, you know, you know, we could see in his life where, I mean, he's hoping for 25 years. But the only reason he could do that is because he believed the promise. He believed what God had That's said right. to him. And so I was, I was telling Caleb, I said, you know, I said, this is, you know, you don't just hope once. I mean, you kind of got to know that this is something you must keep alive in your life. I said it to him like that. And he goes, oh. And he says, um, he said this to me, and I'm going to write it in a book someday. He said, hope is not just to be had, but to be maintained. Now think about that a minute. You know, like Jim talked to you about the dream that he had of being a pharmacist in a small town. And, you know, that doesn't even sound like much of a dream to some people, but that was his dream. Your dream may not sound like anything to anyone else, but it's your That's dream. Right. Right. It's your dream. It's up to you to keep that dream alive, to keep that hope alive. And so, you know, like Caleb said, it's not just to be had. You have to maintain it. Well, how do you do that? You do it by hiding the Word of God in your heart mm -hmm. and, and allowing that truth that you've planted there that's caused you to hope this way, you allow that to be set in your heart just like concrete. Or jello. Or jello. Like it just, it's just there. I'm not going to change. I'm going to stay fastened to my hope. And so when we do that, we're not going to have a sick heart. Because we don't want to be have our hope deferred, no. or and and when it doesn't come right away, that's okay with us. We've learned how to endure and how to have enduring hope that will 
bring us through all the storms of life. Well, you so, think about this. There was a young man named Joseph. Mm -hmm. He had a dream mm -hmm. that his brothers were going to bow down to him. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, that's good. Well, except that his brothers hated him. That's right, they and did. And they sold hate him. him as a slave. Mm -hmm. So he now he's a slave in Egypt. Oh man. Okay, so years pass. We don't we don't do not know exactly how many. I've read that anywhere from maybe twelve to twenty years mm -hmm. has gone by. Now, I don't know, but one day, one day, some some men walked in. And you know what they did? They, they bowed, bowed down to him. Down. That dream, that that hope that he had, there it was. There it was. When it seemed like, I'm going to tell you, it seemed like it was hopeless. This is not going to happen. That's right. This is not going to happen. But you know what? It did. Mm -hmm. You know, you could mention like King David. And the Bible talks about him, how... He was a man after God's own heart because he would do whatever God told him to do. Yes. Do you think his heart was set? Yes, it was. His heart was set. Remember when, when Samuel came to anoint the king and it was going to be David? Remember how he went through all the sons and he says, man, he said, this one looks like this ought to be the one. I mean, look how tall and dark and handsome. He's great. And God said, I don't care how he looks. I don't look at the outer part. I'm looking at the heart. And so... David's heart was set. Oh, God knew that. Okay, he knows about your heart. He knows about mine. But also, let's think about Ruth. All right, she's a, a great woman of God and, you know, ends up in the genealogy of Jesus right. Christ. A Moabite. Never should have happened ever. But her heart was set. Remember, she had those words of commitment that she said to Naomi. And then, um, then we've talked so much about Abraham and his heart. That's set good. your heart. You have, you have to set your heart. Mm -hmm on the Word of God. So your hope won't be That's deferred. Right. If you have prayer requests, please contact us here at the bottom line. We'd love to pray for you. We believe God answers prayer. And I want you to remember this. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my, my disciples, disciples indeed, indeed, and you and shall you know, know the truth, truth and, and the, the truth, truth will set you free. free. 